Hi, this is Lee from the Law School Toolbox. Let's talk about an area that often trips new law students up. Where does the law actually come from? This sounds like an easy question, but like many elements of the legal system, the answer turns out to be more complicated than you might expect. There are two basic kinds of law that you'll study in law school. Number one, law that comes from cases, which is known as the common law. And number two, law that has been passed by a legislative body or is written down somewhere, like statutes, code sections, regulations, restatements, sometimes referred to as codified law. So let's start with the common law. Common law comes from cases. That means a judge came up with a law influenced by any number of sources, and it's now legal precedent. So all judges have to follow any law that another judge writes down? Well, no. To understand the scope of the common law, you must understand which jurisdiction this particular fragment of the common law is binding on. Therefore, you must understand the court system generally. As a federal system, the U.S. has state courts and federal courts, each of which has its own hierarchy of trial courts and appellate courts. Generally speaking, precedent is only binding within a system. So you don't want to be citing federal court decisions from the Northern District of California when you're in a state court in San Francisco. Those federal cases are irrelevant. So why do we study law from around the country? What about the torts book with decisions from state courts all over the country? Isn't that all common law? Yes, but it would not all be binding if you're practicing in a specific jurisdiction. In law school, it's there to illustrate generally accepted legal concepts, but you want to be more careful in your legal research and writing class, which will typically feature a problem set in a specific jurisdiction. Anytime you think, is this settled law? You have to immediately ask yourself, where? It's impossible to answer the question in the abstract. Now let's talk about everything else, most notably statutes, codes, and regulations. These are rules that are passed by some sort of legislative or regulatory body. That means that a judge didn't come up with the rule, but a different branch of government did. Typically, you can flip open a book or search the internet and find out what the official rule of law is when it falls into this category. Go ahead and try it. Google California Evidence Code 352. Look at that. You now know exactly what the rule is. So why do we still read cases in classes that focus on this type of codified law, like civil procedure, evidence, criminal law, etc.? Well, not surprisingly, when the government creates a rule, often there is ambiguity in how it should be applied, either when it should apply or how. This is what the courts make rulings on. They give lawyers and other courts directions on how to handle issues relating to codified law. You'll read cases to explore these nuances, but you'll also need to understand the rules that come from the statutes themselves. Now, bonus. What's a restatement? A restatement is something that sounds like law, but isn't really law, unless your professor tells you to treat it as such. The restatements are treatises published by the American Law Institute, describing the law in a given area and guiding its development. Different restatements are frequently cited by judges in their opinions, and sections are therefore adopted as common law. But a restatement is not the law on its own. So now you understand the different options for where the law comes from. Let's talk about how this plays out on law school exams. So what's the law on an exam? In addition to the real world complexity discussed previously, what law applies in a California court? Is it a state court or a federal court? Professors can introduce even more confusion on exams by using hypothetical jurisdictions without telling you exactly what law they've adopted. So what's the black letter law in a made up jurisdiction? A large portion of your grade will turn on your ability to provide an answer to this question. For example, 
Consider a hypothetical jurisdiction of Smithville in the state of Smith. You know nothing about the choices the legislators and judges of Smith might have made over the years, so you're going to have to analyze any legal issues in light of, first, the traditional versus the modern rule. Obviously, the law changes over time. Compare the doctrine of contributory negligence, which is traditional, with the doctrine of comparative negligence, which is modern. Under the traditional doctrine, an injured victim who was at all at fault couldn't recover. Finding this unfair, the law in some places has evolved so that the slightly at fault victim could recover for the portion of the incident that wasn't her fault. If you're not told which rule Smith uses, you'll want to talk about both on an exam. The majority versus the minority rule. Different states make different choices about what the law should be. When you don't know what state you're operating in, either of these rules might be in force, so you'll want to analyze both options. Common law versus statutory law. Contract law is a great example of this because there's often a conflict between the outcome under the common law and the outcome under the UCC. Arguably, this is a variant of the traditional and modern rule paradigm, but it doesn't really matter what you call it. If you're not sure whether Smith has adopted a particular section of the UCC, it's important to consider both options, the common law and the UCC, black letter law. So in some cases, you might have more than one black letter law rule that could conceivably apply. Now, although this seems scary and a little weird, it's actually great. Why? Because it gives you more to talk about in your exam answers. More to talk about leads to more potential points. And don't worry too much here. With practice, analyzing all these different options will be second nature and you'll be well on your way to exam success. Okay, that's all we have time for today. If you're starting law school soon and want some personalized help to feel confident on day one, check out startlawschoolright.com for details of our Start Law School Right course and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or Allison at lee at lawschooltoolbox.com or allison at lawschooltoolbox.com or you can always contact us via our website contact form at lawschooltoolbox.com. Thanks for listening and we'll talk soon.